You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video, and by NewTek, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, welcome back to our continuing coverage here at CES 2014 in Las Vegas. Nevada. I'm John P. I'm Renee Ritchie. And we are bringing you all kinds of good stuff all day long. Thanks for sticking with us in continuation of that uh, trend. Absolutely. We actually have Anthony here from iLock. Good to be with you today. Com. Yeah. iLock. So uh, you guys have a big show going on. We have a big show. It's been a terrific couple of days. Today was the, the first day of the show. It feels like we've been here for a week, a week already. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How many days before today did you guys already start with all your like pre media and, all? and yeah, all that stuff? Well, we came out, came in from the East Coast. We're, we're New York City based and uh, like everybody from the East Coast, we got tied up in delays and cancellations. So what should have been a Saturday morning arrival turned into a late, late Saturday. At arrival. least you got here. You did get here. We got here. here. Luggage came about a day and a half late. At least ah. it got here. At least you know. it got here, yeah. Cup's always uh, halfway Next full. Next time, tell me. I'll send you some snow tires for the plane. <laughs> right. Exactly. They know how to deal with it up in Canada, yeah. apparently. Yeah. They, just, they just send us in the air. They don't care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's been a couple of days of uh, media briefings before the show opened. Great reception. Uh, so we talked a little bit about Myris. Walt Mossberg loves it. Mentioned it as top five. Mashable top three. Uh, just heard that... Um, uh, PBS mentioned it top of show, so nice. Wall Street Journal. I mean, it's really kind of taken over as kind of one of the, the, the best products and technologies at the show. So I'm happy to share it with you guys. Yes, please do. And but again, thanks for having us. Well, we're glad to have you yeah. on. Sounds like security to me, John. Yeah, you think so? I think so, a little bit. Might a little right. bit, very, very much about security. So what we really have done, so the company is iLock. We've been around since 2006, so technology's been in use in enterprise market. You, we, we started taking this to market in the access control space. So we all go to work and we have a card and we badge in to go through doorways and turnstiles. So that's where our product has been for the past bunch of years. Fortune 500, Fortune 50 companies using that solution. Now, those companies have been saying, hey, great, we love how you're protecting our data centers and our nerve centers and all of this, but how do we take that technology and simplify it so that we can actually protect our digital assets, our laptops, and anything that has a username and password and all that type of thing. So we've done that. We've simplified the technology. We've got it into a small form factor. And that's what we're here talking about today. Um, so want me to just jump into yeah, the technology? Let's, yeah, let's see. What is it talk and how about does it, it work? So we are an iris-based identity authentication company. Okay? When you say iris, you're yeah. talking about my eyeball? Yeah, I'm talking about your eyeball, the okay. color part of your eyeball specifically. Okay. That's well, all we care about. People have heard of retina scanning. Yeah. How is iris different than retina? So the retina is in the back of your eye. The iris is in the front of your eye. Iris is the color part. Is it unique enough that it could be identified just like anything else? Like yeah. So fingerprint. So I think your viewers will appreciate the uh, a little bit more of a technical understanding mm -hmm. about the eyeball. So. Your iris is formed during the gestation period in, in mom's womb, right? So it's actually called chaotic morphogenesis. Nice. Kind of technical name. Chaotic right? favorite word. morphogenesis. Yeah, exactly. I want a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So it's a rapid tearing of the membrane. That rapid tearing creates a unique texture or pattern of your eye. Your right eye and your left eye are different, and no two people on the planet have the same irises. So, do some irises look cooler than others? <laughs> Actually, they do. I mean, when you look into other people's eyes, oh my God, you have beautiful eyes. Yeah, right? it's like, like a tiger. Like, yeah. Like, so they really, literally, might have beautiful eyes because literally. it's like genetically, like. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, literally. Anyway, go ahead. So the iris, as a biometric, is second only to DNA in oh. terms of statistical ability to authenticate somebody. Wow. So DNA sits up here. However, a cheek swab to open my computer, probably not, not going to happen, yeah. right? And twins don't have identical irises, right? They don't, and yeah. DNA does. Yes. Oh, so, really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So statistically speaking, iris is a really, really secure way of proving that you are who you say you are, who you claim to be. Now, iris technology, been around for 20 years. So it in and of itself is not new. But what is really driving the adoption in the marketplace today is that iLock has incorporated video-based capture technology. So that makes it fast, really user-friendly. It makes My, it convenient because before, at least based on the movies, you'd have to have an entire complex with this big thing bolted on a wall. Exactly and you right. walk up and stick your eye yeah. in it. Right. It was large. 
it was yeah. hard to use, and it was really expensive, and the user experience was difficult. Yeah. You had to look into a binocular type of uh, con contraption, and it they just wasn't blank, the mainstream. makes you want to blank. It's horrible. Well, now exactly. I see just, you've got this little thing. It's like this little blue dot. What is that? It's like a little camera? So this is Myris. It is. It's just a camera. So let me explain how it works, and then okay. I'll do a demo. Yeah, yeah. So we have a video camera. We capture roughly 20 frames per second. Our algorithms are sorting all of those images in real time, and we're finding the most clear image of your right and left eye. We bring those two together. Our algorithms then immediately convert all of those unique characteristics that we talked about into a 2,000-bit stream. That is a code of you and only you, right? And that's important, right, because people don't want the idea that you're actually storing their irises. 100% yeah. right, and that's a really good point. So even though we're using video technology, we're not recording video. We're just capturing video and allowing the, the, the technology to just grab it and create a template. So the only thing that is stored on this device is your template. Yeah. Now, that template is just used to do a match every time you want to do something like log into a computer. Well, before you move on, can I ask yeah. a question about that? Because I'm not sure if I understand the difference between storing a template that's sure. of my eye that would be unique versus a picture of it. What's the difference? I mean, if you have the template, but don't you have the boiled down version of what my eye would be anyway? It's a very good question. So if I took a picture of, of Renee's eye, and then you tried to use that as a way of authenticating, that's not going to work. We're not interested in what the image looks like. We're interested in all of the characteristics, those 240 points that make Renee's right eye Renee's right eye. So that template is. It's like math, right? It's statistics. That's yeah. exactly right. So once that template is created, it's encrypted and then scrambled so it's super secure and it's stored locally. Okay. You're enrolled in our application software that sits on your computer. And then every time you want to log in into the future, you literally look at the camera, and in less than one second, we do the same thing. We take video, we convert it, and we just look for the match of the template. It grants you uh, access if you're authenticated. And today, because we have to have passwords, it will act as a password manager and okay. literally allow you access into anything that requires a username and password. Okay. So let me show you real yeah, quick, and then me, we'll get into it. Show us a how it works. Bit. All right, so I'll literally, we kind of say it's as easy as looking into the mirror. So the camera has a, a convex mirror here. So I literally just look at myself in the mirror, and then, then in half a second or less, it's going to grant me access to my computer. Wow. OK, so I explained a lengthy process. Yes. But in less than one second, a lot is happening. Yeah. And that's the beauty of, uh, of something being easy to use, right? The average user doesn't need to know how complicated the science is and what's going on. They, they just don't want need it to, to be use complicated. It. It's got to be easy. Yeah. OK, so. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna skip a whole bunch of. There's Callie. I'm <laughs> just gonna skip a whole bunch of uh, uh, details and go straight to your next generation of this, which I already know I want. Okay, yeah. so let me just tell you what I want. I want that yes. in a in my watch. I want it right. built into my watch. I want it to be very low power. I want it to beam Bluetooth to that or something. Trusted I don't know. device. I you want, want your watch to be I a trusted want, device for your computer. That's right. I want wireless for that. I want it to work my computer. Right. And I want. I don't want a key for my house, right. my car, or my office. Right. I want that crap in there unlocking everything. <laughs> so when you, is that going to be ready? So you want it embedded. I want it, and I want it now, All mister. Right. <laughs> this so, is awesome. So this is fantastic. So we, we launched this today. Um, obviously, that's where we're going. So we launched this today. It, it'll be uh, available at retail mid-year, under $300. It's available for the enterprise market immediately. So we start shipping you know, uh, late first quarter, early second quarter, that type of thing. So this is important today. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm answering your yeah, question. No, this, yeah. So this is important today because the service providers tell us that we need a password. But because of the FIDO Alliance, um, we, I think it's safe to say that passwords are going to start to go away later this year. 2015, as the service providers adopt the FIDO client and embed them natively into their platforms, we'll really start to see passwords go away. Then uh, the market, consumers, will use an authenticator that is FIDO compliant. This is Myris. It will be FIDO compliant by the time all of this happens later in this year. And then really, if you log on to whatever it is .com and you want to buy something, It'll ask you to log in with your FIDO client. You'll use your Myris device. You'll look at it, and that's how you will log in to transact, buy something, do whatever it is you want to do. Online banking, Gmail, or what have you. Now you mentioned banking. If I am the par I'm not saying I'm a paranoid type, John, but I'm a paranoid yeah. type. Yeah. I could also use this for multi-factor, right? I could yeah. have my password and my iris, maybe a dongle. That's right. So we're not replacing the entire authentication protocol. We are participating in that value chain. Nice. So we are the authentication layer 
of the value chain. So all of those processes, your bank is going to dictate how we log in. We're not changing that. The banks are going to control that, and they should. They have uh, federal and regulatory and compliance issues that they need to maintain. The good news is that iLock does solve a lot of those compliance issues, and that's what's really driving a lot of the adoption. So that's really cool. So now we start to see FIDO drive the market demand for the elimination of passwords. We're FIDO members. We're really dri helping to drive that into ubiquity. So we already have embedded solutions, okay. embedded PCs, embedded smartphones. We have not announced any partnerships yet. So we'll be doing that in the very near future. CES, we want to make one announcement, one splash. We're introducing Myris. But you can expect next year when you go to the store and you buy your favorite smartphone <laughs> or, or tablet, you will have iLock embedded. But that's just devices that are vessels to our digital world. What you're talking about is a really, really great example of where this goes. So yeah. if we go back I 10 know years. that's down the road. Not future, too far, but, though. Yeah, yeah. Think the about Wi-Fi. Yeah. Wi-Fi, when it first came out, was a big box. And it was you a card. A you route. slid into yeah. your machine. Exactly. It was difficult to use, but it had a great, um, a great market. Yeah. And as we do in the technology world, we increase the rate of change, we get it smaller, we create utilities, and Wi-Fi today is now a module that's everywhere. Yeah. And so iLock's technology will, will be driven down to that same kind of ubiquitous solution. So it will be embedded, something small, something that can be everywhere. So you explained something that was actually uh, a TED Talk uh, last year. So our chief strategy officer, Jeff Carter, he was a former head of innovation at Bank of America. He did a great TED Talk. I, I encourage everybody to, to jump onto the TED website and look at it. And he really talked about exactly what you're saying. Talked about, hey, we have got to be able to protect our identities and protect our privacies in all aspects of our everyday life. Why can't we protect our privacy and do it digitally when we walk in the door? When we check out at our favorite big box retailer? When we get on an airline? When we get off an airline? We have to get our bags. You know, the value chain is broad. We live in a digital world. Every single thing we do is a, is a digital asset. We should be able to protect it. Yep. The thing that makes it so interesting for me, well, a couple things. One is security has always been at war with convenience, and you had to choose one or the other. Right. But this next generation stuff is making it so that my mom could theoretically use this. She could never use this before. And the other thing is you're making all our stuff smarter. We've had smart mics for a while, Siri, yeah. Google Now. Right. You're making the camera smart. It can now tell who I am. It's not just looking right. at me. It's knowing that it is me. It's I right. Think the, uh, I think that the real key here is the multi-factor yes. authentication because in the past, my, let's say my dad or you know somebody, uh, especially an older generation, they have a really hard time adopting secure password type right. strategies. But if we can give them a pin that they can remember easily, right. and then we can give them a tool like this, this provides the really difficult step that someone would have to overcome. Right. And then they can put in their little pin, and I feel better about them maybe reusing the same damn pin all over the place, right. uh, because that is the really difficult hurdle to overcome. So It's absolutely right. I mean, it, it looks fantastic. Thank you. It's, uh, it's hard science, but we think we've simplified it down to the least common denominator, where we make it fast and easy for everybody to use. I think that another important piece is that there's, everybody can have peace of mind that if somebody steals your iris template, let's say this is a big question we've gotten in every <laughs> single discussion, yeah. so we'll just put the 800-pound gorilla on the, ta on the table. If someone does take your template, what happens? Can they break it like they've broken some other biometrics in the, in the past six months? The answer is no. So we've got liveness and a lot of other security features built into this stack and a chain of providence. So a sequence of events have to happen in chronological order or the system will just go to sleep. Very nice. Yeah. So you can't reverse a human eye from a code. And so therefore, you can't be physically present with a code to start the process. So again, if you lose this, if by some strange chance somebody was able to unencrypt the encrypted file, it's completely useless. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. It looks yeah, amazing. You'll have to keep us all up to date. Absolutely. We'll keep you guys up to date. Yeah. We've got a lot more stuff coming here from CES. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Right here. Right now. This spot. Yeah. <laughs>